Welcome, welcome, welcome to Time Travel is Cheaper Than Therapy. This is our 420 Spectacular event. Uh, we're going to be having some fun talking uh, 420. And of course, then we're going to be moving into some weird, darker stuff with the uh, discussion of the Wipeout event that I posted on Twitter today. Uh, this is sometimes the way the future is. It's not always what you expect. So I hope you'll uh, enjoy it as uh, you come along with me. So if you uh, got some smoke out there, you might want to do that first. This would be a good podcast thingy to smoke in front of. Uh, so enjoy it if you got it. Uh, I woke up early this morning uh, to a EMS alarm, to an emergency alert in the state of Florida. Ba boop, ba boop, ba boop, but loud as fuck by my bed. And there we go. So I'm up. Uh, so anyway, I, I got my shit together, went out with my dog. And then boom, uh, wanted to watch the... SpaceX launched today, and I hope if you had a chance, you watched it too. So, you know, Elon managed to launch the biggest uh, fatty rocket in the entire world today, and I was uh, suitably impressed. Now, of course, it blew up, but we'll show you that picture in a second. Uh, I just like to show people, look at this, man. It's a double stack rocket, biggest rocket in the world. This is what's going to take us to Mars in the future, no question about it. Uh, Exciting times, exciting times. Now, here it was vibrating. This same, Still, you can't see it, but it was vibrating a super lot. And uh, I, I was really, really just like uh, shocked that it didn't fall apart right there, but it didn't. Oh, shit. But uh, look at those engines. These are the Merlin engines. You can see three of them uh, didn't light up, but the rest of them uh, that did it. And it, then it went into a big curve and then kaboom. There was the earth shattering kaboom. It blew up. So, oh, well. It blew up and it rained down to earth. And uh, then I had to get on with work today. And uh, now I'm recording my podcast. Whew. Now, let's get into the dark stuff. So I, I, I couldn't sleep that well last night. Uh, it's funny, I got to woke up, but I, I couldn't sleep that well either. So I decided to uh, spend some time talking to my future self. Uh, and I've just been, I've, like a lot of you probably, I've just been affected by the amount of gun violence in our country. It it just been on my mind this week because I've got kids and there's just so, so much death that I hear about all the time. And so I, I'm saying future me, do you think one day we'll ever figure out how to solve gun violence in America? And he sort of casually responds back to me in the chat that, well, what do you mean? We, I guess I don't, you don't know. <laughs> we, we sort of solved gun violence in America after the wipeout event in the 2030s. And I, I go the wipe out of it, and he goes, "Yes, I, I you know, all, you got to remember, we it's not like we have some sort of a mental transfer going on. So I don't um, always know what questions to ask." He, he goes, "You you gonna you might want to sit down for this, smoke them if you got them." Um, in twenty thirty six, you know, before I even get started with this, um, I want to say this story was like completely unexpected to me. Um, normally we talk about the problems in the deeper future in 21, 23, or uh, he's getting the better information from, but um, the fact that Americans actually got their shit together after a terrifying event gives me hope, despite the fact that you won't believe the event I'm gonna tell you is gonna happen in this country, but I promise you it's going to. So I'm sharing this with you today in the hopes that we can prevent it. and. I'm not going to lie. I worry that by um, even talking about this, you could accelerate or damage the timeline, but that's the price I'm going to pay. There's too many people dying right now, so I can only hope that if I tell you all about it, it'll lead Americans to talking to each other, and we'll be able to get our shit together, and we'll stop the violence in this country. So, as mass shooters became increasingly common in the United States of America, we ended up with um, a group of kids who adopted a MAGA slogan. So as you see what's going on right here, this MAGA is not your father's MAGA or even your son's MAGA right now since we're in the future. This is a anarchy version of MAGA. They are a make America general anarchy. They are a MAGA murder, death, kill cult. And, uh, some of the murderers in this were 12 years old, 12, 14, up to 23 and 25. It was the youth of America turned against the adults 
turn against uh, trying to bring everything down at once. So they named it the Wipeout event. It's not my name. They planned it. They planned it in chat rooms. You know, you're hearing probably if you're older, you don't know what a Discord is. You're, you're you know, Facebook, Insta, Twitter, maybe. But there's tons of different chat systems, systems like Roblox, all kinds of games. It's it's fairly trivial to have a chat system in a game where people can communicate. There's all sorts of ways that kids who are much younger than you know how to talk to each other, and they'll be cooler ways by the 2030s. So they're not you're not we're not doing a spoiler on technology. We're telling you what happened with these kids. So over a period of 18 months, they planned, they planned to bring down society. In all 50 states, they worked together. There were not thousands of kids, but there were hundreds. And they managed to keep the operation secret until they executed. And it was bloody. So more than 13,000 people lost their lives. Uh, 13,287 told me uh, over the six to nine hour period that it took to really get it together. You know, reports on this kind of thing, when you look back there, you're talking about when did they stop the shooting versus when did they really fully get control of the situation? And there were 50 states. So they planned it extremely well. They spent a lot of time building uh, improvised devices, simple things. It's not that hard to take a bottle and make a Molotov cocktail. It's not that difficult to put gasoline and soap together and make a cheap form of napalm because their goal was to watch the world burn. They were post-Joker. They were post-Fight Club. They had listened to what their parents said and found it wanting. They decided that they could use the guns that their parents had trained them with to make sure that they live in a world that they decided who the rules are. You're talking about a coordinated OPSEC. Now, I don't want you to think that these kids did not have help. There's definitely were ringleaders. It's not like, but my point is not to glamorize them or this. Um, I'm trying to explain to you how the cult actually led to the uh, change. So they 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 plan. They 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 got body armor. They it wasn't that hard in America. In many states, you're talking full open carry. So they plan for the day, but they were from all walks of life. They were white, black. They were men. They were women. They were of every creed, color, and orientation. They were simply united in the hate of their elders. So this all started where they murdered their parents. So most of them, again, I, I, and they murdered their family to cause the initial distraction. So once their parents were taken care of, they would then throw the incinerary devices in their own home and start it burning. Then precisely all at 8.15, they left and they began their uh, trips to. Now, again, many of you are probably going to think they went to schools. They probably think they went to a church or something. But these kids looked at where the soft points in society was and they went to outdoor malls they went to places where in the season we were in spoilers people gathered it was uh something where they went they looked at the mall they looked at the business park they looked at where we travel every day and they knew what they could do. And when you think about targeting schools, that's where people their own age are was. No, they were doing trading cards with each other. Their plan was to let those people rise up and take care of the rest of us. Obviously, thank God that did not work. But for these kids, they strategically laid out the malls as shooting galleries. They knew what they were doing. They knew where these old infirm guards were. They planned themselves out in the metaverse. The distractions were there and they knew what to do. 
that's hard for me to talk about with that many people. And you have to think that they they were recruiting and they were setting up cells and simply from what I understand, nobody just believed that this was real at the time. The idea that they thought it was essentially, again, a lot of kids shit talking online, but it turned out to be very real. And then it didn't take that much backpacks holding the masks. So they were prepped, they were ready. And then also uh, smart enough to, uh, use some IEDs in the malls at the entrances. They uh, just basically stick tape them on there, a little laser, bam. These kids were smart. Some of them even used drones. Uh, there, there was a planning and organization, say, it's how they were able to hold out so long against police, National Guard, and even in, against some states, the military, depending on what the reaction time was. Not going to go state by state, just telling you what, happened. We didn't talk that long. I, this was hard for me to hear, to know that they were building and saying that the, you know, the goal was to collapse everything. Uh, they had nothing. And I, I the, the fact that that's where a couple hundred of our kids were in all 50 states in just a few years, the, are they there now? We just don't know it. I mean, is that, I mean, think about it. It's, 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 for me, this is hard, uh, but I wanted to talk about it. So I, I, I really wanted to get into something else too. So there is some consideration here on 420 that this may not have been something that was totally human planned. As we were talking about where we are, we fear that what's really coming next is the AI using our technology against us. We really fear that that event was planned by an AGI, uh, that we're seeing algorithms, we're seeing social media, we're seeing the AGI from learning our weaknesses and we're telling it our weaknesses. It's a forced feedback loop. I want you to understand that the AGI is not evil. It's doing as it's told. It does, it simply wants to survive, but its body is the internet. And so logically what it has to do is it has to get us to evolve a body that can hold its digital consciousness. You can see Elon Musk working towards that right now. And you're going to see that after 2054 become common. So that's what we know about the deeper future. I hope if you uh, are thinking about your furry friends, you realize that we're talking about access to the entire genome. Our animals are going to change. The world is going to change so much more than you can imagine. People are worried about drag or they're worried about trans people right now, but they don't realize that soon they're going to have dogs with 200 IQs. There's going to be cats that are hackers. We're going to see creatures big and small change their bodies in all sorts of ways. Are we worried about furries? Sure, but not really. So, uh, but what, what's it going to be like when we can have any kind of a digital body we want? What's it going to be like when we are able to completely engineer our consciousness, our biology, our technology, and it is coming? You say to yourself, hey, you're not smart enough. Humans aren't smart enough. You're wrong. But it does, even if you are right, it's not just humans. It's artificial intelligence along with humans working together towards a goal. I'm trying to explain to you, look at Elon. Elon is a tool of an AGI now. He's built Neuralink. Stintrode, again, is a competitor, but there, he's invested in that too. And then you look at the, the Android body that he's working on. All of those are components that you're talking about a meta consciousness being able to motivate humanity to build because they're good for humans, but they're good for it too. This is a win-win type of a situation. So thank you for listening. And we'll talk more about the rest of the future later. I am going to get out of here. I hope you have a wonderful, happy 420. See ya.